Oh yeah. Bows. 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 Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy E C E O and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, official Mr. Maker. What's going on? Not nothing, you know my dad walk on. Man, hey man, hold up, man. You know, we come all the way down here to New Orleans and yes. we run into a jewel. Somebody from out of Port Arthur, Texas, man. I know, all I mean, the way elite, down here. Man. I mean all one of the, the one of those chosen here. ones, man. She from the land of Pimp C, man. Mm -hmm. See, hey, hey man, this dude right here, you know anything to say is Port Arthur? Oh, they in they on boss talk. Anybody? She said. She said. You know what? I'm from Port Arthur. I said you got to come on boss talk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Check it, man. Tiffany Hamilton's in the building. Community activist. Absolutely. Man, yes. thank you for coming on the show. Thank y'all for having me. Man, so man, you know, uh, we bring people on here, man. You know, outstanding people, people of the community, people that has mm -hmm. left legacies and legendary things that has happened around them, man. You know, so we thought it. Right mm -hmm. to bring Tiffany Hamilton on Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. That's what's up. Man, so thank you for coming on the show, man. And we like our audience to get to know you a little bit more. So tell us what it was like growing up in Port Arthur. Um, have your family ever ran into Pimp C's family? Are they attached to them? I mean, tell me the ins and out, the whole background. Go ahead. Growing up in Port Arthur, the first thing I think about is family. Mm -hmm. wow. That's what my community is built around. Right. And my family is serious about how we love on each other and how we love throughout the community. Mm -hmm. I personally don't have a connection with Pimp C. Okay. But as this morning we were having breakfast, my dad was telling you guys about who he was raised with. Mm -hmm. And so he's very familiar with his mother. Mm -hmm. And just last week, we had the 10th year anniversary of UGK Day in Port Arthur. Hey. So that was an amazing, amazing experience. I'd love to have you guys come out next year for that. I heard but about we it. Wanted, you said a word earlier that meant a lot, legacy. And Man. that's what we want to leave. Mm -hmm. Man, you know. And that's every year they have this. And this is the 10th year. This is the 10th year honoring UGK honoring. Day, but okay. this is the first year that I'm aware of that there was a huge event surrounding it. Correct. I okay. heard about it. I had heard so about it through, uh, Bobo talked about it. Uh, it was a couple of guys from up there that, uh, uh, one that y'all spoke of, you, one you went to school with, what was his name? The guy that I told you I talked to a few weeks ago? Um, Lionel's friend. What's his name? Oh, Lonnie's friend is, we call him Pichu. That guy, yeah, he called me, Pichu, he called yes. me, and uh, matter of fact, we talked about that a little bit. And, uh, mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I was just excited that somebody's doing something. Because mm -hmm. I'll ask you now, you know, because you've heard the UGK movement, new, the UGK sound, uh, what was it for you that stuck out about PMC when you heard his music? Well, I was in high school, or maybe leaving junior high, headed into high school when that was hot. Correct. Okay. And it was something that we had that was specifically for us. Wow. When they spoke about Gulfway Drive, that's something I can relate to, riding down Gulfway Drive. When you talk about Troy's, the place where we will go and get burgers, fresh fish. So things that we can relate to, it makes it personal for us. So wow. we want to listen to it more and more and more. Wow. Especially mm -hmm. when you leave home. You think you got something. Mm -hmm. Because other people around the world knew what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So they knew something about us. Man, I just love it, the fact that, that you know, you, you were down there. You, you said the first, you know, when they first got hot or when they first was hot. Because they stayed hot for so many different years. Mm -hmm. when, when they signed a job, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And just to see some guys that would mention Texas because there was a street there. I'd never been there, but I know short Texas, Texas Street is, is, is <laughs> there, short Texas. Yeah. You know, when you see that and hear that, I never been there, but it. I tell people all the time. To me, it felt like he was representing the whole Texas the whole time, mm -hmm. because of the way that he would speak on it. And then being from a small town, and I'm from a small town, I just loved it. And then they had songs like "Now They, now they Got Me Running from the Feds," mm -hmm. and and I was hustling during that time, mm -hmm. so I definitely could relate to everything they were saying. So it made it was organic for me mm -hmm. and my you know me growing up as a kid. So mm -hmm. thank you guys in Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, Bun B and Pimp C for those songs in the UGK mm -hmm. movement, them Botany boys, all them people, man. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, why I feel that it's very important that when 
um, you grow up in a certain city and you become a celebrity or a person that has a voice that you really rep where you're from, not only where you now reside, because a lot of people do rep where they now reside mm -hmm. as their hometown, mm -hmm. but also rep where you're from because it makes the people there um, feel good. Even if you don't go back and um, donate to the community or do anything for the city, you are actually verbally doing things for the city by bringing awareness That's to right. that city when That's people right. would have not known Port Arthur before, but now when they think about Pimp C, they think about Port Arthur. They know right. that name. Right. So as much as some of these celebrities might not go back and contribute, build this center, do this, mm -hmm their contribution is bringing awareness to their city. That's right. So that's how I look on a lot of that. So it's good when, you know, you reach a certain status and you're able to do so. But um, so when we were talking to your sister earlier, she said that you growing up, you were like a boss. <laughs> but, um, and then now you're an activist yes. for your community. Yes. So I would say you're doing a lot of boss stuff. Yes. So um, tell me, was that something you've always wanted to do? Absolutely. Growing up, and Absolutely. why? Um, I was a child in elementary school being an advocate for, oh my goodness, when we had a red, yellow, and green light of who could talk during lunchtime, why and when. And so I would write letters to our principal and say, I don't think that's fair. As this a kid. This is our time to have a break. Wow. And if I would get in trouble at school, it's most of the time for my mouth because mm -hmm. I wanted to speak up. I was put out of science class in junior high school once because I told the science teacher I wasn't created from a cell on the beach. God <laughs> created us. Wow. I was created from the the womb of a man. Right. That's how we were created. And she said, I'm going to call your mom. And I said, call her because she's going to tell you the same thing. <laughs> so it's, um, there is a time to speak up and there is a time to be quiet. Mm -hmm. But it is extremely important that when you do speak up mm -hmm. that you're speaking for good. And you make an impact on, on an life. Impact. That's right. But, um, so tell me the movements you started making where you, you, you made change in your community as a kid maybe. Because mm -hmm. I know you spoke up, but did you actually make a difference when you were a kid or it's just now as you're an adult <clears throat> and you're able to do more that you're now making a change when did the changes actually because people get frustrated because they write letters they speak up but nothing ever changes mm -hmm. so it discourages a lot of people I'm like you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore I don't see where I'm making a difference mm -hmm. so how long were you doing this before you actually started seeing changes occurring um, even in elementary school, I would see changes occur. And so then there was certain time frames and certain days that we wouldn't have the um, green, yellow, and red light. So that was because so of your that letter? That was because of our letter. But it wasn't just me. It was also other students who said, yeah, I'm standing with her. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the rallying, learning mm -hmm. how to rally people and not necessarily follow you, but follow the cause. Mm -hmm. So whether I follow the face of the earth tomorrow or not, this is still a cause that they can, they to, can to fight carry behind, on. to carry on. Mm -hmm. That's right. But we also have to learn that the initial reason that you may have stood up, even though you may not have won that small battle, you're still winning the war because you've empowered other people along the way. And so for those who may not have had a voice, if you're teaching them how to speak up for themselves, mm -hmm. then you're still making the impact. Mm. But it's, I've seen a lot of people, it's, yeah. it's, sometimes it can be discouraging. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's such a big, wide world. And then some people are like, okay, how can I make a difference just speaking up here? Do I, do I have to go? There's so much red tape. It depends mm -hmm. on what topics mm -hmm. you want to tackle, mm -hmm. what issues. You know, you might have to write a governor. You might have to write here. You might have to do this. Mm -hmm. You might have to drive four hours to get yes. here, to, yes. you know, speak to somebody face to face. I mean, and I know some people just get tired especially when you you trying to fight for injustice I know that's a harder topic mm -hmm. to fight for mm -hmm. simple stuff as in like changes in your community getting this mm -hmm. done this moved here mm -hmm. that's easier mm -hmm. but a lot of people tend to want to fight for injustice especially injustice for people of color yes and that right there to me is taking longer to um to change so it, has. it definitely has but we have to remember our why so even when you may not become successful at that first um, 
that first battle. Mm -hmm. Again, you have to remember your why to understand what you're fighting for to win the war. Mm -hmm. So the injustices, um, one of the things that's very passionate to, that I'm very passionate about is voting rights. Okay. And that specifically affects communities of color. Mm -hmm. um, not only communities of color, but those poor communities. Classism comes into play with that as well. And then also um, human trafficking. I see that's it a big thing very, now. very often. And my community is Do you is see it a, a lot corridor. in Port Arthur? Yes. Really? Yes. Mm. It is a, a corridor. We can build it, ship it, rail it in Port Arthur. And that's my plug again, always speaking up for PA. We can build it, ship it, rail it. And whether those are oil and gas companies that recognize that or the coyotes that recognize that, they come. So these are not the only... Um, we have a lot of different things around social justice that will affect not only my community, but communities around the world. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to going back to black and brown communities, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we are working as a unit. We need enough of the same people speaking up at the same time, fighting for the same thing. But I think so a, lot a lot of, it of is people doing, real. doing what's real, doing great work. But if we're not cohesive and working in sync with each other, then we're gonna continue to be defeated. But I think a lot of it stems from lack of education. Absolutely. A lot of people don't know um, what their rights are, they don't know. Mm -hmm. People, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's just us, mm -hmm. people on the whole, when I always feel like you coming to me and trying to educate me Sorry, hold on. on something, um, what are you getting out of it? That's right. Why are you, to, you know, how much money you making out, out of this deal? Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing free in this world. Mm -hmm. What you up to, so it's like a trust issue mm -hmm. that we have, even to someone who looks like us. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I I've always heard, lot. I've always heard some people that we are easier to trust people of other race than we are to trust somebody of our own. Yes. Why is that so? Even the Bible speaks about that that a man has to leave their own, mm -hmm. leave home in mm -hmm. order to be reverenced right. or to be heard mm -hmm. and what they're fighting for to be accepted. But um, I think the most important thing is when you continuously shut down or people thinking that you're wanting, wanting to know what you're going to get out of it, you got to keep showing up. Mm -hmm. And over time, then they'll start to believe you. Wow. They'll say she shows up or he shows up regardless of the fact. Mm -hmm. And I, then they'll start to humble themselves. I, 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 55,000 uh, is, is what I'm seeing the population mm -hmm. to be within, I guess, uh, <coughs> 2021. But uh, it's a small community. Um, it's got a, uh, what, what, what it's got, what's, what's the main attraction in, in Port Arthur that I, I can come to when I come there that's, that they're known for? Oil and gas. All in, that's that money. That's yes. the money team. Yes, yeah. well, we can't come for that. That's that's usually for like investments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we don't want to. So what can we? That. What you can we come to see? Yeah, yeah. Like like downtown. Uh, we gonna stop by such and such. Y'all ain't got none. What? Y'all ain't got none. what? No, that we don't. See, Are you there serious? is there is no main attraction of entertainment so in is, the city. Is of there, there a restaurant that y'all know? There's a cook. Okay, I can tell you my favorite. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I absolutely love tequilas on Guffway Drive. Shout out. I will go there three times a week. Shout out. To order my chips and sauce. Tequila. The and the owner, Luis, makes it himself. That's hard. Tequilas on Guffway Drive. That's so I want to spend my money at home as much as I can because I want places like tequilas to continue to grow. But then we have the restaurants BJ's. We have um, several different pop-up Trucks, food I would, trucks now. I, I just, uh, have you seen Trill Burgers pop up food truck there? I have not yet, but I heard about it. <laughs> and the reason I asked you that is because yes. I told, shout out to Bobo. Yes. I said, Bobo, why is Bum B not putting uh, uh, something? You could do a drive through or anything with Trill Burgers in, in Port Arthur, and that would go crazy because this is hometown. Mm -hmm. See, look, Lonnie and I were talking the other day about Trill Burgers, and the first thing I asked was, so I'm, I'm Pescatarian. Yeah. Do they have. Veggie burgers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they have a, you know, seafood, a, a burger. seafood burger? Mm -hmm. And we don't know, but I'm willing to try. Yeah. So, Trill Burgers, if you don't, can you please? <laughs> come through, <laughs> yeah, right? Through. You got to come through. Please Boy, don't have through. to drop that thing. Yes. I, I, I just know that, that that's legacy, that's legend. You know, that Trill word comes from that that place, you know? And uh, when when you think of Trill Burger, you, you think of... Uh, 
uh, just a good burger. I seen the burger. It's definitely oily. It's 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 someone like I would eat. I'm not a what would you call a vegetarian? I'm not. That's not me. <laughs> no. And, uh, pescatarian. Pescatarian. Seafood. Man, I live you and die for ball shrimp. For real. Grilled fish. Because you came up down here in Louisiana. Man. No. Golf. Oh, it's oh, it's right there too. Oh. Yeah, it's right there. I ain't that, but don't get me wrong, my people's family. Yeah. From Appaloosas. Man. Yes. So so you, every it's funny how Pimp C's ties, uh, Louisiana ties, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, um being born in Louisiana and then moving to Port Arthur, but mm-hmm. then letting people know I'm in Port Arthur, you mm-hmm. know. Because mm-hmm. I think he was very young when he moved to Port Arthur, wasn't he? I, that's what I've been told. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But so let me ask you this. You went to college. Did did she go through what college you went through already? No, sir. I would like to ask you like like Getting out of school in Port Arthur, mm-hmm. making a choice to come to college here mm-hmm. in this area down in L.A., Louisiana. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say that, but I like to say something. But anyway, shout out Louisiana. But anyway, just uh, how, how was it, and what school did you attend, and, and what did you major in, and what was your aspiration and dreams? So I attended Xavier University of Louisiana okay. here in New Orleans, okay. and. I um, started school August 1998. Man, it was a it was a big deal. So my whole family dropped me off at school. My whole family helped me decorate my dorm room. It was a family wow. affair. And so while I was here, my my younger brother and my younger sister would come here to visit me all the time. And I just fell in love with the city. New Orleans wow. is one of my favorite places. That's hard. Mm-hmm. That's hard. And the reason I say that's hard is because. You know, um, I love Louisiana like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I was, I'm was i really born six miles, you know, raised six miles away from Louisiana, state mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. So me, I, I just always connected Texas and Louisiana together because mm-hmm. it connects in a, anyway. Yes. Right? <laughs> so we have this special place called Pleasure Island in Port Arthur. Wow. It's one now of my favorite we go. places Pleasure in the Island. Town. Right. And so... You know, um, it sounds like a fun place. It is. Okay. So years ago, there used to be like... Um, are you guys familiar with Galveston, Texas? Right? Yes, of course. And so there's the the boardwalk. Mm-hmm. So Port Arthur, Texas had that on Pleasure Island. So mm-hmm. the goal is to recreate that again. Wow. So growing up, you would have um, picnics out there, parties out there. Every year, Sean Johnson, a shout out to Shaka Sean, he and others would create an opportunity for classes from high school, um, graduating classes from the different high schools in Port Arthur to come out and have a day. Mm -hmm. So we literally would have thousands of people on Pleasure Island just for family-friendly fun. Wow. And right across the bridge, Cameron, Louisiana. So growing up, we would always want to race with our older cousins to go across the pier on Sundays and if they did not take us with us, then we would tell that you were going across that bridge to buy beer. Wow. Man, you know, when you was talking, I, I just kept thinking about I'm about to hit Gulf Way just past, past Troy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, it's something about yes. this. The music is, when you get older, I don't know, I'm older than you. Mm-hmm. But the music comes back to your mind That's right. all the time. Like That's you can right. be doing something and not even worry at all. And I don't know, the mind is so powerful. Yes. Because you can be doing something, and I know I'm like, why would I even think about that song? Mm-hmm. And it just pops up. And what I just think that about my sense of smell. It'll make you think about it. Well, you know, COVID messed with people's smell <laughs> up. No, I'm just going to be real with you, girl. I had I, I, I had, I had caught something. I never, because I'm a, I'm a God-fearing man. Okay. So I, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm walking around the house quoting scriptures, trying to fight off whatever this is they trying to put on like me. Climbing COVID. No, man, I don't want nobody in the house to be alone, man, and I walked with my chest out in my head, and I would go shopping. I had my mask on, but mm-hmm. I was like, man, one day I'm, my wife was cooking some beans, and you know how they smell when they Ooh, burn? Yes. Oh, no. Burn. Stinky. Like, burn yes, when, yes, when the water just yes, run too low, yes. and I was just sitting there on my computer. I never smelled it. And when she came out of the room from sleeping, she said, you don't Ooh, smell that? I think you may have had COVID. I, I don't know. I'm just telling you, this was... Mm-hmm. Probably saying. about a year and a half, a year and something. When it was real, mm-hmm. I never got COVID in my mind mm-hmm. and in my heart. You never accepted it. I don't know what that was, but I just know mm-hmm. I never, I didn't smell it. This mm-hmm. was, and I wasn't sick of this. This was after all, after the going through the phases. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was the crazy part. So, I mean, 
smelling is something you take for granted. But COVID made you understand that a lot of things we were taking for granted. Yes. Right? What yes. was the biggest impact when you had to go home, isolate yourself, and look at whatever your issues was head on? Mm -hmm. What was what was some of the things that happened during that COVID? Were you period? married at that time when COVID was going on? No. Okay. This, no. this was... Um, so I divorced in 2011. Okay. So that was a while, a while ago. back. A while okay. back. Okay. But during COVID... I didn't stop okay. because I actually worked for a nonprofit organization, worked from home, and my responsibility was to house homeless people. Mm. Wow. And they were also affected by mm. COVID. So we created, um, this organization allowed me to create an opportunity for myself and for my family to make sure we fought for those who couldn't fight for themselves. Wow. Mm -hmm. I but were you scared though? Because you're dealing with a disease that um, you're dealing with a disease that um, you, we didn't know nothing about, and you had to deal with all of these people trying to house them and all of that. Okay, I got to sit up on this one. <laughs> COVID was real for my family. Mm -hmm. My wow. grandmother was very ill, and she was passing away. And mm -hmm. she said she wanted everybody at the house. Mm -hmm. And we did that in the midst of COVID. Mm -hmm. so Hold on us, one second. So when my grandmother was passing away, mm -hmm. she wanted to come home. Okay. So my mom and her Where siblings. Where was she? said, come home. What city? She In Port Arthur. In Port Arthur. But she was in the a hospital. Nurse. Okay, hospital. And she did not want to Was it from COVID? Hospice. No, she had other health issues. Okay. However, we believe that COVID was one of the health issues okay. that she did get. Mm -hmm. And we think from loving on her, it may have spread mm -hmm. um, to us. And about at that time, about um, 20 of my family members, we have a large family, about 20 of my family members got COVID. Mm -hmm. and But nobody passed away from it. Nobody passed away specifically from COVID. That was mm -hmm. a true blessing. But my, my mom and dad, they, they are each other's ride or die. And so they got COVID at the same time. Mm. And so they were in the house and they were sick. And it was, it was scary. Mm -hmm. We brought our lawn chairs to sit at mm -hmm. the door to see them through the door to right. go and check on them and leave groceries you know, at the door for right. them. But it wasn't, um, it was nothing to play with. Mm -hmm. We did not know with. what the heck that was. We had never seen anything like that in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. So it was like for me, like, man, what, the, what is going on? I wouldn't let them go out. Yeah. I was taking my clothes off, get going the into door. the house, taking a shower three, four times. Anytime I went, I made contact. I just didn't really know what it was. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't want to jeopardize the family. Her mother was, does live with us. And basically, you know, being an older lady, uh, got to protect her. You, you're yeah. trying to figure out ways not to let them. Mm -hmm. But then, lo and behold, it still crept up in the house some kind of way mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. showed its ugly face. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> Eventually. But that, that happened like way uh, after. Way way after. after. Once, you know, once you start putting your guard down because, you you know, it's not mm -hmm. as bad. Mm -hmm. That's when that happened. Mm -hmm. About a That's year when, into it, maybe. Yeah, a year, year after. Into it. Mm -hmm. So everybody was kind of comfortable with COVID. So My sister and the kids are the only ones in our family who did not. Even up to today. Even up to today. And she's a nurse. Mm. What does she do? Double mask. Really? Just stay clean. Prayer and supplication. Mm. Prayer and That's supplication. It. That's really That's what it, it is. Mm -hmm. When you okay. So you what is what is what is the end goal for you far as where you want to see things at in your life? Far as what what do you wanna what do you wanna accomplish? When With the city? To, no. <clears throat> Tiffany. Just what, overall. Just overall. I want to fight every day to be the woman that God has created me to be. That's what what that is that like. person? And so that person is an advocate for her community. That person is a wife, a mother, a good sister, a good auntie, a good daughter. And professionally, I would love the opportunity to get to the Senate. I don't know why I just felt that. I feel because the way how you speak, your passion, I feel that's where you're going to be. Mm -hmm. What was that guy named we interviewed in Chicago? Nero. Nero. He was, he's, um, he's going for president, right? Yeah, he's running for 2024? president. 2024? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nero. Shout out, Nero. See, you said you didn't think I, I, I told you got to prove yourself to me, baby. And, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, fighting, we're fighting hard, and it's going to take 
every single community, whether it's small or large, to make sure that we have the right representation and the right leadership for our country. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. I do that right now as a precinct chair for within my county, in Jefferson County. And it is a grassroots movement. I don't care what anybody says, the numbers matter. Mm-hmm. But we can have, we have 250,000 approximately residents in Jefferson County. About 140,000 of them are registered to vote. Oh. It makes me cringe because when a less lot than of twenty thousand come out to vote. Because a lot of people, honestly, as I was getting older, because I was always raised where my daddy used to always like, "You gonna vote?" That's right. But um, as I got older, and I hear other people, especially other people of color, mm-hmm. they'll be like, "Why? It's not gonna make a difference. Like, mm-hmm. why should I waste my time? Mm-hmm. You know, it, they're crooked. It, this, this, this." I don't really know because people don't spend the time to research That's because right. even whenever you go to the polls, you have all these names and you, you don't know all of these names or they go off of what I hear on TV. That's an advertisement. I hear that name that whatever advertisement come on the most, the most. that's right mm-hmm. that's the name that's sticking in their head i'm like oh i'm gonna go vote for this person because mm-hmm. that's what i hear mm-hmm. i don't know what the person represent mm-hmm. i don't know what changes they're gonna they're gonna do for my community i don't know anything about this person mm-hmm. but i'm gonna vote for them because that name stuck in my head mm-hmm. how many people actually do because you, you tell everybody or these advertisements tell everybody to come out and vote but who? You need to know what you're voting for and who right. you're voting for. That's right. And what's suppose if you do research it and everybody that's there you don't agree with, then mm-hmm. what? You can't tell me to vote because I have nobody to vote for. I tell people that your undervote, you not voting, is saying yes for what you don't want. Wow. So it is your responsibility to research and find out. I'm not saying that every single person on the ballot is going to be a valuable, valuable option to you. But you got to choose the least well, of the say, two evils. Hey, all going on one. Yes. And uh, we we blessed to be able to, you know, uh, be a, a place where people feel comfortable telling their story so mm-hmm. their legacy and legend can move, can can live on. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I, that, when I done this, it was because I said, man, something could happen to me anytime. My kids can always go back and look at this and they'll be able to look at this for years on end mm-hmm. if we just keep working. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what we, that's why we do what we do. Having a platform for people to share their truth is the truth. Wow. It really, it's really hard. is. It is. Mm. And we have to offer safe environments for people to speak up so that we can eliminate some of the things that Ms. Jamaica just mentioned. People will say, well, why? Why do I need to vote? Why do I need to go out? I don't like them or I don't know them or I don't know what this is about. Mm. So if you know better, you're supposed to do better. So it is our responsibility when we have a voice and have a platform to be able to share with people who these candidates are, what the policy issues are, what this office is responsible for. We have to go, I don't care if it's five people in the room, those five people know another five people, those five people know another 10 people. We have to spread the word that way. Let me ask you something. Do you do you really? Um, because we, we, we got into the, we didn't go into the college much. Mm-hmm. Something happened. I don't know if she walked back in or what. But I want to circle back to that. Just like your education, because it's so important mm-hmm. that people see how you built the foundation with the family. I know you say your father and all of them came and did the dorm room with you. Mm-hmm. But how was it on campus and in, in during the nineteen ninety eight? Like like you know what I'm saying? Walking mm-hmm. around young, never yes. I got a seventeen year old daughter about to go to college. Oh, she number right. she seen my grades yesterday. She's straight A student, uh ninety fives and up, that's all we call she mm-hmm. number number three number two in the school now. Mm-hmm. Maybe not, three between she rocked between three and two. Lucas is number one. Shout out Lucas. I'm proud of you too. But he's a he's a he's a gifted kid, man. That's good. And I didn't think nobody. But I tell my daughter all the time. She she really came in late because I knew she was bad when she was young. Because I mm-hmm. know how I, you can see. You mm-hmm. know, you mm-hmm. like this girl different. You know, mm-hmm. and um, just how was it for you? Because I know there was high expectations because of your father and he, you being his oldest daughter, and he probably seen it in you as well. Mm-hmm. So so my experience on campus was an amazing experience. So shout out to HBCUs. They really wrapped their arms around us, loved on us to make sure that we were ready for the world. However, when it comes to your children leaving home, it doesn't matter what you taught them. They're still going to make their own decisions. Yeah. We just hope and pray God will have grace and mercy, continue to have grace and mercy and cover them with the decisions that they're making and that you planted strong enough seeds 
for them to make good decisions, right? But my experience as Xavier was fight, fight, fight hard for it because we're dependent on you. Wow. So it wasn't just from our family, but that's the message that we got from um, my HBCU wow. and from Miss Carolyn. I will never forget Miss Carolyn in the career services department. Mm-mm, that skirt is too short. Really? Mm-mm, that skirt is too tight. Or when we would have different companies come in to want to interview us for internships, we wanted those companies that we wanted. Don't come here because you're trying to meet a quota. So we had to learn how to advocate for ourselves Mm -hmm. and to make sure that when you get a seat at the table, that you speak up for those who are not at the table. Mm -hmm. But also humble yourself enough to learn the game so that you can be invited into the room. Mm-hmm. And then you work your mat to get yeah. your seat at the table. Yeah, I, I like it. You know, no, but like I said, for you to be one of those young ladies that was walking around and your dad and your mom, they were still together. You family, they helped to decorate the dorm room. They went in. I, most yeah, that's my daughter was gonna not, do. That's she what I'm not going to let do. you around. Have that's around. what I'm going to do. I'm going to be decorating her room. Wow. A dorm. Her dorm She going to want it. Because mm-hmm. when you step on the together, oh, it's pressure. It's pressure. It's pressure. And it's not that it's, it's a bad thing, but one, you know the expectations that your parents, your family, your friends have for you. And regardless of what happens you know, while you're there, you don't want to have to leave mm-hmm. because it'll feel like, man, I failed. Even though it may have been for a good reason, you know, if you left, is you did not complete what you initially accomplished to do. So you want to fight to do it, but that's with anything. So again, having a humble heart enough to speak up when you need some help, but you also got to fight for yourself. I did hair just so I didn't have to call home every week to be like, I need some money. Mm-hmm. What I look like trying to be at on Chapatulas somewhere at the riverboat or at the riverboat, hallelujah, calling my daddy mm-hmm. for money because I want to go Kick have it. a good time. Girl, please. Let me ask you this. And I still have younger brothers, you know, bro- brother and sister at home. Yeah. That's not how they go. Yeah. Well, you was a leader from Jump. Mm-hmm. Um, just uh, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to link with you to help the community or if they see something and where they want to donate or anything? How would they be able to get a hold of you? I have to say my cell phone is no longer private. What about? I don't it, mind really? sharing it. Mm-mm. <laughs> and people call me all the time. But I want to be accessible. Okay. And I want people to know when I say I want to help, I mean that. Okay. And if I can't, then that means I need to introduce you to somebody that can. That's it. Um, but also email. So yeah. my email is Tiffany L. Hamilton at iCloud.com. Okay. And uh, definitely, um, like, uh, I would like to do something with you. I'm trying to do my backpack thing yeah. where we can yes. help some homeless people and 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 put you know put. We're gonna the, be calling you. We're gonna be calling you. We're trying to. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to link with the right person because right I did it before. We've done giveaways. We've helped so many different people, but a lot of times I just like to. I would like to structure it in a way to where we can touch well, start more our people. Organization you know? to so start there it. is so Frontliners is a nonprofit that my brother started back in 2013, and we've been doing what you just described. So right now we bring those things to the schools Mm. and it is an organization that is focused on frontlining your life. Don't wait for somebody else to do what you can do right now. Be that leader, frontline it. And literally I say frontline your life and he checked me and say frontline your life Mm -hmm. because he wants people to know that you don't have to be in order to sit at this table, don't come here having to be precise. Don't come here having to speak correctly. It doesn't matter. We want to know where your heart is. Man. We want to know if you really, really want to work in the community. Well, Tiffany, thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101. Thank y'all for having me. Say, man, uh, this has been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel. Um, make sure you guys link up with us, man, and get Tiffany number. Call uh, Call me, too. You know my number. It's, all, it's, it's not as public as well. Uh, so, man, check it, man. 504-236-2018. Man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 with a boss's talk. And we out. So when are you running for city council?